Hello, I'm Dr. Timothy O'Donnell, and I welcome you to Rome, to the Eternal City, and ask you to join me as we continue our spiritual pilgrimage to the Lenten Stational Churches of Rome. Today on our pilgrimage, we'll be going to the church of San Crisogono, St. Chrysogonus. He was another early martyr of the church, who during the savage persecution of the pagan emperor Diocletian, had this saint bound and cast into the sea. Our trip to this church takes us once again outside the walls of the ancient city, across the Tiber River, to the region known as Trastevere. Over in this region, many of the ancient, in ancient times, you had many of the Jews and also the early Christians. This particular church, dedicated to the memory of this great martyr, was one of the earliest gathering spots in all of Rome and one of the original 25 tituli or title parishes in the city of Rome. The great tradition of martyrdom lives on in this ancient basilica, which is now in the hands of the Trinitarian Fathers. Let us cross over the Tiber River and go to visit the church of San Crisagono. This church, which lies in Piazza Sognino over in Trastevere, is another church which takes us back to the beginnings of Christianity in this city. It has one of the loveliest Romanesque campanelles to be found in all of Rome, and the bell tower dates back to the year 1124. It was the architect Soria who built a Renaissance Baroque facade with a lovely portico holding four Doric granite columns. This dates back to the year 1626, but of course the church itself, as we move inside, is of far greater antiquity. It is in fact one of the ancient titular churches of Trastevere and was mentioned as early as 595 by one of the Roman councils. The main body of the church, however, was built by Giovanni da Crema in the year 1123. St. Chrysogonus, the martyr who is mentioned in the Roman canon, died a martyr's death, it is believed, on the 24th of November in the year 304. In the old Roman martyrology, we have the following account of his death. The death of the holy martyr Chrysogonus, because he courageously professed his faith, he was subjected to bonds and imprisonment for a long time and then dragged to Aquilia at the command of Diocletian. There he was beheaded and cast into the sea and thus obtained the martyr's crown. Excavations underneath this basilica reveal it to be one of the earliest house churches used by the Roman community. We know that at the time of Augustus Caesar, at the beginning of the Christian era, this particular area was densely populated with numerous foreigners, Greeks, Jews, Syrians, people from Egypt. There was a very large Jewish settlement also in this area. We know that there were Jews present at the time of Pentecost from Rome. These are mentioned explicitly in Acts of the Apostles. A number of these were baptized by Peter himself. According to tradition, when the Apostle Peter arrived in Rome in the year 42, he stayed with Senator Pudens up on the Adventine Hill. There can be no doubt, however, that he journeyed down to this area where he would have found a welcoming among the Jews and Gentile Christians living in this area. St. Paul also probably would have labored in this area at this particular time. The inside of this church is typical of Romanesque churches at this particular time. A number of Baroque decorations were added during the 16th century. There are 22 very large columns of antique granite which support the trabeation. The ornaments are taken from the Borghese coat of arms for it was Cardinal Scipione Borghese who financed much of the architect Soria's restoration. The lovely altar, also designed by Soria, has a baldacchino supported by four columns made of precious alabaster. The pavement, among one of the most beautiful in all of Rome, goes all the way back to the 13th century and is contrasted with the lovely Baroque ceiling.
The apse's triumphal arch is supported by two large porphyry columns, which are the largest porphyry columns in the entire city of Rome. Frescoes also can be seen in this basilica, which date back to the 8th and the 11th century. Of particular interest to the Christian pilgrim as one journeys into this basilica is up on the left side a small side chapel. Here lies the remortal remains of Blessed Maria Taigi. These remains are incorrupt, and one can view the great Blessed through a thin wax mask. She is a great role model for Christian mothers. Blessed Anne Maria Taigi was born in the city of Siena on May 29th in the year 1769 and was baptized on the following day. Because of financial difficulties, her parents, the Gianettis, moved to Rome when Anne Marie was only six years old. In the Eternal City, Anne Marie attended the school conducted by the Philippian sisters for nearly two years. Following her schooling, she worked at various occupations, even served as a maid to bring in financial assistance to her struggling parents. While still a relatively young girl, she was married to Dominic Taiji, a pious young man, but of a rather coarse character. Anne-Marie was more concerned with his virtue and did what she could to improve his lot in life. The marriage lasted for 49 years, and she conducted herself with the greatest affability and delicacy within this marriage, finding numerous opportunities within marriage to exercise continuously the virtues of patience and charity. Their marriage was characterized by the highest Christian principles, and this is one of the reasons why she is such a great role model. She was to bear seven children, three of whom sadly were to have died in childhood. Two boys and two girls, however, grew to maturity, and she provided them with a great religious education and also a secular education. She was blessed with numerous mystical experiences and had tremendous devotion to the Holy Eucharist and to the Blessed Trinity. She eventually entered the third order of the Most Holy Trinity. The Trinitarian Fathers still care for this church. Although she was married, she fulfilled the obligations of the rule with great diligence. The most unusual of her mystical gifts was the apparition of a luminous globe like a miniature sun which shone before her eyes. For nearly 47 years, she could see into the present or into the future events all over the world. Many popes and cardinals consulted with her. She eventually was to die on June 9, 1837, and was beatified on the 30th of May in 1920.